Hi, everyone, and welcome to my talk on building automated quality gates into your CI pipelines, a talk which I hope you'll find really useful to be able to ensure that when you want to balance both the need to deliver software very quickly and the need to deliver high quality software, you'll be able to solve uh, through utilizing this idea of automated quality gates to help you to balance both sides of that software delivery paradigm. Um, but before I continue any further, uh, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Craig Reezy, and I am the head of engineering at Old Mutual. Uh, I also run my own board game company called Risky Games as well. Uh, I have a book out called Quality by Design, where you can get a lot more about different things around how you can design software with quality in mind from the beginning, uh, along with me. If you're trying to figure out my accent, I'm from Cape Town, South Africa, and these are just some incredible sites from my beautiful city, which I hope you'll come visit one day if you've never been. But back to my topic on hand, uh, what is a quality gate? Uh, and this might be a new sort of thing to some people. Uh, some testers might refer to them as entry and exit criteria when it comes to the testing and what they need to do. But essentially the big thing that we're trying to focus on with quality gates is trying to create some sort of change control or some sort of automated measure which can assess that the quality of the software is ready to be able to move on to the next phase. If we think about it from a CI-CD pipeline perspective, we each have steps in our CI-CD pipelines, and we want to make sure that the software is of a proper quality before we move it on to the next phase. And that's essentially what it does. And the reason why we want to do this is because it prevents development from moving to the next stage uh, you know, until certain measures are met, to make sure that whatever we're delivering meets our quality needs and that we're not delivering or deploying poor quality software somewhere that's then hamstringing other parts or other departments within our software development organization. So it's important to make sure that we can do it right and that it automated so it can fit the actual CICD strategy. Because again, we don't want to have quality gates that are now slowing us down. A lot of time people view process as something that is maybe slowing them down and they're hesitant to put quality gates in place. And that's why we need to find ways of making sure that these things are going to be automated so that it doesn't slow you down. It allows you to continue to move quickly and deliver. Why quality gates and why should we focus on quality gates? Well, I think it's First, because it's a focus on something that is measurable. So when I say what's of high quality, it's often very difficult to determine what is high quality software and what is not. So what we're looking for with quality gates is something that is really measurable, something that we can look at from an acceptance criteria perspective, you know, to make sure that everything is met uh, and ensure that we have the right measures in place. Uh, quality gates help drive a shift left mindset development. So in order to have proper quality gates in place, uh, uh, particularly when they're automated, we need to ensure that we're actually bringing the design and the testing of our software earlier in the phase. We're not now checking things at the end. We're checking things from the very beginning of our design of our software, of us writing code, implementing code. We're already starting to check, are we happy with the quality of the output? Uh, and by automating that, uh, we're just safeguarding ourselves against poor quality code later on. So we're preventing making future mistakes or slowing us down as a team because we're putting the right quality gates in place. Uh, we're thereby also uh, you know, preventing testing from being impacted late in the cycle. The testers don't need to worry about that end of sprint crunch or that end of cycle crunch because everything's really starting to be tested early on. Uh, and it ensures that we have proactive quality. Again, that we're not looking at quality in retrospect, but we're trying to design quality into the process of what it is that we're trying to deliver as an organization. Um, but it's more than just having quality gates in place. I think there needs to be a lot of building blocks for quality gates before we can start doing this properly. And I think this is one of the, we first need to start with actually having well-defined and clear completion criteria. We need to know what what measures are needed to say, this is what we need from a well-designed requirement. We need to have a testable architecture. Ultimately, in order for us to really automate our quality gates, we need to ensure that everything can be testable. Uh, and that means that specifically from the software we're designing, we should be able to write unit tests against every single component within that architecture. So we need to make sure that everything is testable, obviously with a strong focus on unit testing, again, with that shift left mindset, trying to ensure that we can bring everything uh, you know, into a unit test. And if we can put strong unit tests in place, it allows us to then be able to move it on to the next phase. We need to have strong automation teams in place with regards to integration tests. So it's not just about that the having strong unit tests, but now we pass it on to another phase where we're starting to do integration tests and maybe some bigger end-to-end -end tests. We need to have those in a way that can be automated. Uh, and then lastly, you know, I guess along with the most important part being at the top with a well-defined and you know clear completion criteria, we also need to make sure that this 
you know, we have the right sort of idea behind us. If you're working on big iterative cycles where you want to deploy once every six months, once every three months, it's probably not a good idea to try and automate that process into a pipeline because those are really big bulky releases that will require a lot more effort to be able to test uh, properly. Really where you want to use this type of strategy is when you're working on small frequent releases where the change that's implementing is really small uh, and that you can really accurately test that adequately within your automated test structure and you're not having these long complicated or big complicated long testing cycles that really don't fit well within a CI-CD structure. Again, we've got to think CI-CD as in fast deployment, fast integration. Uh, therefore, we need to think of small frequent releases and not these big release cycles. So you might not use it everywhere within your software delivery process, but focusing more on your small frequent releases. And then what are some of the things that we want to check? So we understand what, what a quality gate is. We understand why we need them. But what are some of the things that we're actually trying to do with this? Well, I think we need to focus on things. And these are just some ideas of things that you can measure. Uh, there's obviously a lot more that we can do. Uh, but essentially what we're trying to do is we want to measure things like build health. Did our code build right? Uh, infrastructure health. Is there infrastructure that we need to deploy into of a healthy state before we deploy into it? Have a look at test results. It's probably the most obvious thing where we have a look at test results, but not just test results from an integration test, but making sure that our unit tests are there, that everything's okay with that. that uh, we then look at things like our code coverage, not just that our, you know, not just that our tests pass, but was our code coverage sufficient enough to be able to justify us moving on to the next phase? We don't want to have 100% of our unit tests passing, but our code code coverage is really only 50%. Because essentially, what we're saying is we're deploying half-ready software into the next phase for integration testing. We'd rather make sure that our code coverage in our unit tests is quite high. That's a that's a clear measurement that we can put in place. Our security scans. We want to have software that can run security scans and make sure that that's, that's adequately scanning our software to prevent security defects from moving later on. Uh, same with performance. Uh, we can measure performance at a code level uh, very early on. As we're deploying our code, we know that our code executes a certain amount of time. And you can either have your unit test assessors, you can use tools like K6 that are very good at being able to measure performance within a pipeline uh, and use that to be able to assess your performance uh, and then lastly, something like incident and issue management, the number of defects we have, a lot of the issues that we're facing, the severity of the issues that we've logged, uh, you can easily measure that and be able to build that into a system to be able to prevent software from moving on to the next phase or being deployed into production when there's a lot of incidents that are still open and you can kind of prevent that from happening. And only once it gets to the point where you're happy with the incidents and the risk involved with the software release, will it then deploy adequately? Um, yeah, so those are some of the things that you'd want to look at, but what type of quality gates we're looking at. So obviously the different stages in the quality gate process would be things like your setup and checkout of your of your code. When you're actually building your code, you have a quality gate in place there. After we've built the code, we want to execute unit or CI tests. Uh, we put that there and then we can go and check those things. We can do a static analysis scans and that can be a separate quality gate environment readiness check for when you want to deploy into an environment, make sure that things are ready before we deploy. Then we can do pre and post deployment checks on those environments. So before and after, once we deploy the software, we then want to also check to make sure that the environment is still operating and running. Uh, then things like our integration test execution. So we now want to move on from our unit test into something that's now integration testing. And we want to go and check that against maybe a bigger environment against the rest of the functionality. Uh, we want to have a, a quality gate that can measure that. Uh, our dynamic code analysis and things where we want to be able to make some adjustments within the code uh, whatever it might be, uh, that's very important that you'd want to do. So there's sometimes some things that you want to do from a static analysis, but then there's also stuff that we can run from a dynamic code analysis that can really help us with us. Uh, and then we have non-functional test execution, looking at things uh, uh, like our security, like our performance or our load or our stress testing. We can actually go and run those checks and ensure that everything's in place uh, within that build cycle. So these are all things that if we think about it, we can actually measure the success of each step in these things. And we would have a quality gate around that. Uh, so as we're reading our software to get to a point where we want to deploy into production, we've already started to assess all of these things. And each of these things can be measurable. And there are tools that can either be automated or executed or run uh, that can give us results from these things. And so it's very important to be able to uh, assess that properly. Uh, an example, uh, just Going on from the quality gates are things like linting standards need to be you know, met before the code can be built. Uh, 
uh, something like 100%, uh, you know, completion of all your tests with 90% code coverage at a unit level or 100% of you know, across all of your code coverage uh, once your scans are done and a successful pass of all automated checks. Just some obvious examples of things that you would put into a quality gate to ensure that we've we've checked, we've measured this, we're happy that it's now ready to move on to the next phase. I've put here a basic sort of CI CD pipeline and how it would look. Uh, yours might look different uh, and you would probably use different tools to be able to achieve the same thing. But here's just roughly how that would look and the certain things you'd want to do from start all the way to the end. You might not always have these in the right order. You might want to use some of the non-functional tech checks earlier. Uh, you may do your dynamic code analysis earlier uh, and you may deploy in different different stages depending on whether you have a QA environment or a staging environment or other environments in between. Uh, but the point is that, again, at each of these steps, uh, as you can see, it's very easy to be able to ensure that we can put checks in place to say we're happy with what it is that we've got you. Uh, and it is very important to be able to do this. Uh, and again, to have defined criteria for each step so that we then know, okay, well, when, we, when we're running this check, we can automate it, we can check the response, and we can determine from an automated perspective whether we're happy with the output or not. Um, Another way of doing it, uh, and this is now looking at something that goes pre the code and sometimes even analysis and development. So that last one was just looking at CI CD, but it's even possible to sometimes look outside of things and put some checks in place from our documentation perspective, having to look at our monitoring from an operation perspective. Do we have the right monitoring in place? Does monitoring exist? Have we set up a monitor pause? If not, don't, don't deploy the code. Uh, putting our things like our mutation testing, uh, making sure that we have that within our development cycle. And uh, there's, again, different things that we look at, and there's different ways that we can move code around before it merges between the branches uh, or moves on to the test bench uh, to ensure that we are happy with the quality of what's been delivered. So these are actual things that we can check. Even at an analysis phase, we can check certain deliverables. We can check certain schemas and certain things exist. We might not be able to read or assess it quality of everything clearly, but we can check that they exist before we're moving on and we can put, again, criteria in place that can measure to measure that. Um, uh, I'm going to move on to the how to build quality gates now, uh, and this is a, a very high level look at how you could perhaps do this in Azure, uh, just utilizing some tools like Visual Studio Code, uh, using Git uh, to be able to build an Azure ADO pipeline uh, and then be able to build those things. But uh, I want to specifically focus more on perhaps something like this where we're now having a look at code. And this is some example of some YAML files where we want to have a look at things before and after a deployment. Uh, we have a pre-deployment test and a post-deployment test where pre-deployment, we've got some bash jobs that are that are running, maybe calling some configuration within our server and database and just making sure that you know we can do a health check and ensure that we're happy these things are up and we can put a bash script in place they can put it together same with our post deployment uh, you know we can then have something where we're actually creating a smoke test folder now we want to create a bash script it doesn't have to be a bash script uh, you know, it can be an actual sort of test execution thing that's then going to check this but we want to then go and check that everything is up and running post our deployment of something we can measure our code coverage and pass rate. And this is, again, another example here where we're actually now utilizing a tool that runs the scan. In this particular case, it's Cobertura. Uh, it's running the scan. Uh, and then we're just making sure that it can analyze the results within a certain directory. And then it's got to make sure that the code coverage target in this case is 90%. Uh, so what we're saying here, and you can assess, we've just, here I'm just looking at the code coverage target uh, you can break that down into the line coverage statement coverage how you want it you can add multiple measures in place based on what it is that you want and then you can also assess whether the pass rate is 100 percent or 95 percent you can add a whole bunch of measures all i'm looking at here is saying that the code coverage target needs to be a minimum of 90 percent so it's got to scan and say that at least 90 percent of it has passed before it will move on and allow the deployment but again this is just an example of how you can build these measures in place and create the tasks uh, within your pipeline that allow for that check. Um, and here is another check where we can actually check for successful scan results. So here we're actually running an aqua scan against the code in this example, and we're actually now going in and assessing the results of that aqua scan and saying, well, you know, if we have any critical issues, uh, you know, depending on what the severity is, uh, here we've set it to being being critical or high vulnerability, it won't let it continue. It's saying that we, you can't even build this code any further 
because there's a critical issue inside and you need to deal with that and sort that out before it will then deploy further. And we can build this code into our pipelines and make it flow quite consistently. So again, something that we can do quite easily within our code if we have it right. Uh, and I wanted to end off on this last point just about observability because at the end of the day, all that we're trying to do with these quality gates and the CI pipelines is really bring observability into the mix. So very important uh, that as we're doing this, that we can collect data from multiple points, that we can bring all this information into something. So yes, we can have our CI CD pipelines run all these things, but we also want to now take that information from our CI CD pipelines and all the execution runs and actually see what's going on and have some observability to be able to analyze our process because we need to adjust it from time to time. Our quality gates might meet our needs for now, but might not meet our needs for the future. And so we want to be able to analyze these things better uh, and by being able to take data and store data in a certain way and be able to visualize and set up alerting on your quality gate itself so you can actually assess not just when your quality gate fails, but why it fails and is it meeting your purposes and then maybe track trends of failures. It helps to then better refine your quality gate to become something that is more adaptable for you. Thank you so much for your time. Hope you enjoyed the talk.